Hey everyone, uh, welcome back, welcome back. Well, I got some pretty good news, guys, and a kind of a nice um, update, I guess I, sh I should say. Uh, actually, um, on my off-grid home, guys. So I've been getting back on my projects, started to run wires and run this and run that and trying to get all these small things squared away, right? Well, with all these hurricanes that are happening all in the United States, I'm in Hawaii, right? So we do get hurricanes, but not like you guys are having, um, luckily, you know. Um, but that's not to say that it can't happen, right? Now, I don't got no problems at my house. My house is perfectly fine, okay? But there's been some things that I that was in the back of my head that I've been wanting to do since day one, which, uh, which I should have done from day one. But with that said, let me talk about what I'm talking about here. So... As you guys know, oh, it's kind of a little windy here. Sorry, guys. As you guys know, um, <clears throat> I have a post and pier style home, meaning we have a post and it comes down to a concrete block pier. Underneath there, we you know we dug down. We have a lot of gravel in there, compacted with the um, concrete block sitting on it. Right now, this is a common style build that you will see in Hawaii, guys. Um, a lot of the older ones are like this. Even some of the newer ones I've noticed are like this, okay? And there's nothing wrong with it. But because of where we live, most of you guys know that we get a lot of high winds regularly. Now, let's say we do have a hurricane that ever hits us, you know, <clears throat> in, you know, months, years, whatever. I want to be prepared for that, right? At least to the best of, of my ability. So my game plan, guys, oh, my camera's not focusing. But my game plan, guys, is to do the footings. So yesterday I had some guys come out. Um, there was a house down the road that was built similar to mine, except not as tall. But they they never did put the footings in the corners, right? And so I seen these guys out there when I come home from work, whatever I drive by, I see them out there, um, you know, adding the footings to that to that structure for that for our neighbor down the road. So I swung by yesterday to go talk stories and just I'm trying to get some references, right? Because I want to get my four corners um you know the footings done and then also i want to have that sheer wall put in the middle here just to make sure this house is locked down you know what i'm saying guys so when the high winds come you know i want to make sure this thing is locked down as much as possible if my house blows away well then most houses will blow away because you know <laughs> i'll have footings they have footings right you know that kind of deal but i think it's just a lot safer a, a smarter idea i've been putting it off putting it off putting it off because we're just doing so much stuff and so I'm getting ready to order that drywall. I'm getting ready to order, order tile and hardwood and floors and all that stuff, right, to put in this house. Now, before I do that, I decided that I'm going to try and have these footings squared away before I do that because we're going to start adding a lot of weight to this to this structure, right? Because, you know, drywall is heavy. You know, there's tons of that, right? So all this weight, the weight itself is not a big deal, right? But when you're going to do your footings, you don't want to have too much weight in there, more than you absolutely don't need because... When you get ready to redo the footings, you know, you have I, we have to remove this this pulse here, right? This the four corner pulse here. So what we need to do is we need to remove this one, but we need to support come across and jack it up just a hair, right, to support it. So that way we can dig all this out. So I believe for my structure, it, it calls for an eight foot. Um, so basically, uh, you know, concrete from there all the way to that one because right in the middle is going to be four foot four foot so considering my structure is roughly 32 by 32 um square um it needs to be eight foot out so eight foot this way and eight foot this way you know dug down um rebar um, pour concrete um and then there's a couple ways we could put block with concrete with rebar in it um just to get us up to a certain height and then from there we build the shear wall on top of that um concrete structure um, so that way everything the corners get locked in really solid So that was something I've been putting off and I knew I was going to come back to it at some point Now I'm kind of glad my house is up high because it's a lot easier to work on So yesterday I did have some guys come out. We were talking stories um, I went down to there inspect their work that they did on the other house and so um, basically um, They're going to go ahead and give me a quote and all that So they're going to get all the stuff together and he's going to shoot me over a number and we're going to talk stories And if the price is right then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have him start with, you know, the first pulse on um, the first corner. Now, the middle ones here is different, just the four corners. And then we're going to have the shear wall in the middle. Um, that's going to help support the middle of the home. I mean, we have no problems right now, right? Everything's good. But we still want to make sure everything is done properly, right? So the house is absolutely built to code except for the option of the, the um, 
footings on the four corners and the one sheer wall in the middle. So, um, you know, I want to make sure everything is copacetic. So that's why I'm going out of my way right now to find the find people that are capable of doing this. I'm looking at their work, all that kind of stuff. Now, I could do it myself, yes, um, but I think I would rather have somebody else do it while I'm doing other things, you know, because that could easily put me back. So these guys can come out here, work, do their thing, build these footings and get them done. And so when they came out yesterday, they said, well, since your house is so high, it's going to be a lot easier because they, bring, they can bring the cement mixers in or whatever it's going to be. Um, if I don't decide to buy uh, or bring in a cement truck just to pour it all one time. So that might be an option as well because it would be all the same type of concrete mixed, you know, it would be the same consist consistency in all my footings you know um so you know that's something to think about but that's an, that's another thing too that it, you know you have to make a decision are you am i going to do all four corners one time or do we just do one corner at a time i think for me it's going to be a lot safer and and easier on everybody just to kind of just do one corner at a time so i want to point that out um i know a lot of you guys never have kind of don't see this type of construction but here in hawaii this is very common guys in fact a lot of these older houses guys don't even have concrete blocks they actually have river rocks they're round huge river rocks <laughs> that's some of the older style homes but you know if you drive around guys if you drive around in town you'll find regular houses that are on concrete pads but if you get away from the town area um you actually see tons and tons of homes here in hawaii on, on multiple islands here that is built basically like this it's this post and pier construction and it's too cold there's nothing wrong with it you know not nothing wrong with that but we still need to address the the footings so um yeah i'm hoping these guys give me a fair price and go from there um if not um me and my worker can do it you know we'll, we'll just start one project we'll support it make sure everything's all you know um safe and then we can remove that corner piece and we can start digging down and I can put, start putting the rebar in and we can start building our form. And then we can come back and pour concrete and then, you know, go from there, you know, build up and start building that sheer wall. But yeah, um, you know, I'm just been thinking about the, the fact that, you know, I get we get high winds all the time anyway. And I haven't had any problems, but let's just say we do have a major hurricane come through. You know, I want to make sure my house is protected. To, to the max if, if, if it's possible you know so making sure that the footings are there um, will also protect the home make it more solid from ever moving or doing anything um, so you know it's one of those things you know my house is so high so these are the things that we need to think about now um, for that corner there it's not so much of a big deal because it's on the open this one over here it's right here not a big deal um, but the ones in the corners like the one back there in that corner and the one in that corner. And um, what we'll have to do is we're going to have to remove some of the T111 on the bottom, which is not a big deal because I have access to the back, right? So I can, you know, pop the board, you know, bang the boards out. And then we can go ahead and address those corners. And then we can cut the, the pieces that I'm removing because we can reuse them as long as we don't tear them up too bad when we, when we remove them. Uh, we can go ahead and cut those to size when we build that nice wall over there with all the concrete and, um, you know, tile blocks and all that stuff. And same thing for that corner over there in the back. So, um, yeah, that's kind of a big update, guys. Um, that will pretty much bring my home up to par 100%. Um, and then everything's going to be fine, you know. Um, so, but yeah, I've just been thinking about it, you know, with these hurricanes and all this other stuff. I think it's safer that I take care of this stuff now before we start getting those things. Because, you know, we'll have those seasons where, you know, hurricanes are start coming. Tornadoes, not tornadoes, but hurricanes are start coming through the area, through the ocean here. And, you know, some islands get it worse than others. And so the last thing I want to do is have my whole house just lift off and fly away, right? So, I mean, there's a lot of weight in here, but when the winds get crazy, it'll rip things right off your house. So um, having something anchored into the ground is going to be nice and um, solid, you know? So I just, have, I just definitely want to uh, make this video to talk to you guys about that. I know it's something that we don't ever really look at or talk about, but I want to bring it to everybody's attention that um, we I am going to have it squared away with, um, of course, footings and, of course, the sheer wall here in the in the middle of the home um either this way or this way um i think that one needs to be about um eight to twelve feet roughly i think about eight feet wall eight foot sure wall would be fine um but i'm gonna double check to make sure everything's copacetic everything's up to cold and go from there so anyway guys thanks for tuning in i want to give you guys a big update that i'm getting my footing squared away um you know we're gonna start that process so anyway thank you guys see you guys on the next one